Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning. My name is Lee Charles, and you're listening to a day of prayer's morning Bible study. We're so glad you could join us, but before we get into the word, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being good to us all the time, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for that goodness that we can go and show to those around us, Lord. Lord, that we do not have to respond out of anger, Lord, when somebody does something to us, Lord. But that way, we can show the other cheek and respond in your love, Lord, and draw them unto you, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. First, that it guides our steps, Lord, and that he also calls us out when we're doing something we know we're not supposed to and draws us back into the fold. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen. And good morning and welcome, everyone. I'm glad to have you with us as we continue our discussion and study of the Lord's house. And first, how it applies to Christ. And also how it applies to us in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we just ask if you're blessed by this message or any of the other ones that you listen to that you'd like it, that you subscribe on this and any number of platforms where you can find a day of prayer and that you share the message, the episode with someone else so they too can be blessed. But most importantly, that they learn and grow in not just knowledge, but in relationship with our Lord and Savior is a huge, drastic difference. And that is vitally important for both now and eternally. So, that being said, we ready to get in the Word? Yes. Yes. All right, well, we're continuing today, moving forward, and we're still in Exodus 30, but we are going to cover verses 17 through 21. And... It discusses or it begins giving instructions about the bronze laver or a laver of bronze. So, can I get a volunteer to read that section of scripture, please? I will. All right. Promise. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "You shall al- you shall also make a laver of bronze, with its base also of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar." And you shall put water in it, for Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet in water from it. When they go into the tabernacle of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister, to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord, they shall wash with water, lest they die. So they sh- so shall they wash their hands and their feet, lest they die. And it shall be a statue forever to them, to him and his descendants throughout their generations. Mm. So while this is only a few short verses, the significance behind this is immense and weighty, right? Hence, the Lord saying, instructing Moses, that it shall be a statute forever to them, to him and his descendants throughout their generations, right? But also, to escape the pending um, consequence of not following the instruction, right? Which is death. Okay? Okay. Yes. Um, You notice that this, uh, that the laver of bronze, uh, a giant bowl, as it were, right? Was constructed of what? Bronze. Bronze. Everything in it. The bowl itself, but also its base, was bronze. And does everybody know where this was located? In be- go ahead, sir. The charge, you can go ahead. It was outside the holy place? It was in the court of the tabernacle, in between the bronze altar, and the tabernacle, or tent of meeting, right? Yes. But it was still in the outer courts. Do do we notice something about this? Both of the bronze items, completely bronze items, 
are in the outer court. Yes. Bronze signi- uh, signifying what? Human nature. Human nature. Okay. So, can I get a volunteer to jump to... Uh, we're going to go to John, the Gospel of John, which is in John 13. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. John 13? Well, yes. First. We're going to begin verse 1. And can I get a volunteer to read through verse 8, please? I will. All right, sir. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, taking a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel which he he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing... What am I doing? You do not know. Un- you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, "You shall never wash my feet." Jesus answered him, "If you do not, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me." Mm. Okay, what did we just read in Exodus thirty? That the point of the laver was for to washing their hands and feet. Washing their hands and feet, and you just. We just read in John 13 about Jesus doing this very thing with his disciples. Amen. Right? Amen. And what is the point and purpose? So they could come into his presence. I mean, that was what it was for. Amen. Initial. If you do not do this, you will have no part of me. Right? Yes. Okay. Again... The bronze items, right? The bronze altar or the altar of bronze and the laver of bronze were in the outer court. They were not entered into the holy place. Never mind the most holy place or the holy of holies, right? Yes. They were outside. So in doing this, Jesus paves the way that we can enter enter in right yes. so it's this, this is important it's significant and it also speaks to i'll say water baptism right what is the point and purpose of water baptism it's an outward uh i'd say an outward demonstration of what's already occurred on the inside what okay. happens in the new birth what happens in the new birth which If you turn to Luke 3, we see carried out by John the Baptist. Now, let's let's not forget, John the Baptist, or the baptizer, or depending on the version, right? It might say John the Immerser, right? Received this instruction from the Lord, and he was sent to do a very specific thing. But let's not forget that John the Immersers, or baptized, John the Baptist's um, father, was a high priest. So he would absolutely have been raised and taught all the instructions and how to be a high priest to eventually, at some point, fill that role. But instead, John the Baptist, or the Immerser, right? Yes. Was living in the wilderness, 
far from the temple, right? He wasn't living and working and functioning as a priest in the temple during Her- during Jesus and, and Herod's time, right? Yes. So, um, I want to want you to read. Um, let's see. In Luke three, uh, actually, read the first three verses, please. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Read the first six verses, please. Okay. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip tetrarch of Etria, and the region of Ticontris, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, while Ananias, Annas, and Cephas were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went to all the regions around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book, in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be feel, filled, and every mountain and hill be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Mm -hmm. So, verse 3. He went into all the regions around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Does everybody get that? Yes. Yes. So, there is a, again, a washing away. Of sins. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, um, I believe it's in John again. Forgive me as I get there. Um, I believe it's in John, where it talks about um, John the Baptist baptizing Christ, as it were, right? Mm -hmm. It It might be in Matthew, actually. Before he went into the wilderness. Yes. Yeah, I believe it's in Matthew. <laughs> Maybe chapter 3? Matthew 3? If you got it, read it, honey. Oh, where do you want? So about um, John the Baptist... Baptizing Christ. Um, Verse 16. Where it says it specifically, but the whole chapter he's talking about it. Okay. Um, I'm still getting Yeah, let's back up and say, I'll start at verse 13. It says, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by Mm -hmm. him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. There's that... Well done. Mm-hmm. Yes. It is a well done, yes. But what does it say in verse 15? Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. yes. The Lord himself had to be, I'll say, baptized or cleansed, right? Right. Not that he needed the cleansing. He, John the Baptist says it very plainly. I need to be cleansed by you. Right? Yes. But there's still the Jesus as our great and high priest going through each of the steps required by the high priest. Right? Yes. 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 Just um, want to point out to our listeners, I have to remind myself often 
especially in the Western culture, mm -hmm. um, the majority of the Jewish culture fully understood the scripture, especially the first five books, the Torah. Amen. <clears throat> they knew the intricacies of it. They knew the threads that were all woven through it that we discuss in depth as these deep revelations. But they were, they were for a, a word that makes sense for us in our culture, they were hammered with it. Right, they they got it through and they're, through and through. We're inundated, yes. Yes, and and so when we see the moments of the level of disgust and fury that the Pharisees and Sadducees had, they understood the symbolism of the things that Jesus was doing and the claims that he was making. There was no mm -hmm. ambiguity with them. Mm -hmm. They clearly saw even this as to what was going on and knew exactly what Jesus was up to. Um, it, it's difficult sometimes for us to see that and get the depth of this, but uh, th this did not escape them what was going on. They didn't have to search it out like we're doing right now and, and grab the full meaning of it. They got it full well. Absolutely. Jesus was very clear about what he was claiming to be, and that's why they were so upset by it, because they couldn't see it in him. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to. They recognized him, but they <clears throat> didn't want to give up their power. Well, yes, they, yes, even more importantly. But right, it, so, it, was, it didn't escape them at all. That Wait, he's got all the markers of the Messiah, ex, you know, and he is exactly who God is confirming him, and they knew better with mm -hmm. that as well. But they refused to acknowledge him as God because they said, nope, we need our power. They're going to take our kingdom away from us, right? That was what they claimed. Rome was going to come and do this and that and the other and take away our position and things like that. So, yep, I appreciate that, Dean. That is a... I appreciate that. Amen. So you may be asking yourself, why are we talking about the slaver? And then we're talking about the baptism because it doesn't seem to go together, right? Because what we read in Exodus was that there's only need to wash the hands and feet, right? Let's go back to John 13 for a moment because right, we stopped there because we had to make that very like vital point, right? If I, and Jesus says to Peter, if, which also, he's speaking to everyone. If I do not wash you, you have no part with me, right? Paul says in Scripture that um, it is speaking about marriage, right? But we know that we are the bride of Christ, and that um, he washes his wife clean with the water of the word, okay? Yes. 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 But now, part of the bride of Christ. Yes, we are a part of the bride of Christ. Yes, people and its place. The the church, the body of Christ, is the bride of Christ. Exactly. Um, so Jesus in verse 10 says this, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you, right? Because, of course, he's speaking about Judas. But then he again asks them, in verse 12, do you know what I have done to you? Right? And then he says uh, that he has washed their feet, and also they should wash one another's feet. So in there, there is a, the Lord has already purified them, as it were, right? Yes. Washed them. And there is a another element aspect of we should, I'll say, wash each other's feet in, in the sense of they're already bathed, right? Yes. I'll, and I'll say, and bathe in the blood of the lamb because he's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So this already happened. There is a reason for this order. As you walk into the the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, right? There's first, you enter into the outer court. There is the altar, right? We are to present ourselves a living sacrifice to the Lord. And then there is yes. now the laver. Right, when we are willingly choose to do that, to make him Lord and Savior, he is the one that then resurrects us. And if you see with the baptism of John the Baptist, or what's known as John's baptism, right? There is a complete submergence, which signifies Christ, and, and this is happening during the Last Supper, as he's preparing to go be the, to actually, I'll say, manifest as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, right? Yes. yes. As the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb. 
where he died and then was rose again. So the laver is also the, the resurrection, symbolic of the resurrection in our lives, right? We're dead to the, the old sinful nature, but made alive in Christ. And now as a result, we can enter into the holy, the, the holy place mm-hmm. with him, right? Yes. yes. We should not be operating in human nature which is what the bronze signifies, but operating in his nature, the divine nature, gold, clean, and made pure. Does everybody get that? Yes. yes. I know it's a lot. Um, there, There's a lot there, but it, it matters to us. Right, so with John's baptism, it is symbolic or signifies the death of the old man, the human nature, and now we're made alive in Christ. It's a physical representation to the world of what Christ did in the spiritual realm that happened in us. Mm-hmm. But okay, and so like zooming out just a little bit, so Absolutely, we can yeah. we look at the the God plan. We talked about the um, how the trend God transitioned from the blood of bulls and goats and mm-hmm. things to now we're coming into the blood of Jesus, right? Yes. You you mentioned that John the Baptist was uh, an heir to that lineage, right? To be mm-hmm. become in line for being high priest and things of that nature. And so he became a, he brought the high priestship, the natural one that we saw, which would be here. You guys can't see my hands right now, but I'm <laughs> holding them up above the floor a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, they would be here and it pointed to the higher thing, which is Jesus. Right, we transitioned from bull, bulls and goats to now John the Baptist is saying, "Be baptized in water for the remission of sins, not sprinkle blood, not this blood anyway." Right, and then yes. we have mm-hmm. Jesus coming and going. Yep, I'm signifying that I'm taking part of that, and now I'm coming into what God created him or brought him—not created, but God brought him into the earth to do. Exactly. Jesus is not created; he is God. He's ever eternal in existence. Pardon the way I said that. I'm sorry. Are oh, you gonna say, it, yes, because we're talking about the resurrection, right? And you said what the Lord brought him here mm-hmm. to do, right? Uh, John eleven twenty five. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though they die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And that's only able to happen because of the Lord and who he is and what he's done. Amen. But there had to be a transition Amen. from the old, um, the old covenant and the old way that things were done into what was now going to happen. Amen. Um, through the blood of Jesus. So I just, I thought it was interesting that God chose a high priest to be a harbinger, if you will, or to signal to Here's the right way. Here's the way we're going. This is what God is saying now. Mm -hmm. Because all accounts, if the old way was going to continue, then that, you know, the Lord would have been in that vein. The Messiah would have been partaking of that and God would have driven that forward. But he didn't. He had the top of the natural means that they knew point to what's coming that they K-N-E-W, that they already had knowledge of pointing to the N-E-W, the, the new way that things are going to be done through the blood of Jesus Christ. I thought that was really interesting because mm-hmm. he could have asked anybody, but John the Baptist was somebody in particular, right, of, that had a right to say, this is what's going on in the culture, if you will, or not going on in the culture, if you, if you will. I thought that was really, I mean, God is so wonderful. He can do all those things, but I never even considered that till we were sitting here and, you know, you were reading, sweetheart, and the, the Lord started ministering to me about that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. And um, also, I find it interesting, we see even in Leviticus, right, water matters immensely, right? Leviticus 14 especially. Mm-hmm. Now there is an element, an aspect of running water, right, mm-hmm. um, dealing with leprosy mm-hmm. and... Uh, especially for for cleansing or healing lepers, right? Mm -hmm. But there's also, especially later on, uh, Leviticus 14, 
Um, uh, I'll say it really begins in, well, in verse 50, right? Same thing, running water. So what is, Christ talks about even with the woman in the well, right? You'll yes. never thirst again because you'll have living water, right? Yes. It's not stagnant. It is moving. It is flowing, right? Yes. Uh, out of, and he says uh, to her that out of their belly, his, her belly, his belly, will come streams of living water. Talking about the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. And you also see the same element here in Leviticus 14. Talking about the the cleansing of, of well, the house even, right? They're to take all these these things. Starts in verse 50, but really 52. They'll cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and the running water and the living bird, the cedar of wood and hyssop and scarlet. Um, and then they'll let the living bird loose outside the city in the open field and make atonement for the house. What did Christ do on the cross? He made atonement. He was our propitiation, the covering, right? Yes. That's what his blood does. It is our covering, washing us white as snow. So all these things were already there as a, a copy of what already existed, right? But also speaking to Christ and what he was going to do on the cross in and for us. So how much more should we enter in to what he's already done? Receive it in full and enter in with him. Just receive what he's done. It requires faith, but a willingness to, uh, to let him be your God and for you to willingly be his people. So I know there's a lot. Let's pause there for today. And um, we'll let, let's let the Holy Spirit minister to you. And of course, if there are any questions or something ministered to you, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to discuss the word with you. I mean, you can reach out and contact us either through our website, adayofprayer.org, and or directly through email at ministry at right. And if, if you would love to or you find yourself in the Hampton Roads area, you can sit in here with us and discuss the word together. Just reach out and let us know. We'd love to have you, love to connect with you, love to join you and, uh, and join in celebration and discussion of the word together. Mm -hmm. So let's pause there for today. And can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. Lord, we just thank you for the redemptive work that you did for us, Lord, that you had shed your blood so that we would be cleansed, Lord, and that we would be made whole, Lord, and that we could come back and be with you, Lord, and be as we were before the world was, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, Lord, and for your grace, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you have been doing for us, Lord, and we thank you for those things that we may not see in the natural, Lord, but we know are being carried out in the spirit, Lord, that you are bringing us to the ultimate destination, Lord, bringing us back to our heavenly community and our abode with you, Lord. So we just thank you for who you are, Lord, and for the blessings that you have poured out on us, Lord, and that you are continuing to do for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a day of prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. 
remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.